first what you want to do is import random. That's a library Python uses to store random generators. And then now I'm creating a variable, a placeholder called my list, which is going to contain our three values, R, P, and S, each standing for rock, paper, scissors. And then I'm going to say what each one of them are by saying R equals R, P equals P, etc. Also, if you don't do this, then when you try and call the function and you're, you're saying A equals R or something, and if A is equal to R, do this and do that, it's not going to know what R is because you told it R is just an element in a list. It has no value yet. So you have to do R equals R, P equals P. Now we are going to generate what the bot player, the computer is going to generate for you. It's a two player game against the computer and yourself. So this is the computer's input. Bot, bot one and bot two representing the three rounds. Random dot choice and then my list. So that basically tells it to go to my list and randomly, randomly choose a value. Now we're, go we're, now we're gonna make a function, we're defining a function called indicate. Basically this will print, um, say you enter a value and then it's gonna say you entered this and then the computer entered that. that. This is basically just that. So I don't have to keep repeating the same. And there we go. Now when, when we call that function, it's gonna print you chose and then k whatever value k is given. So in this case, k is going to be the input we put in. Okay, now we're defining a function called round, which is basically all the conditions the code has to meet. So say you enter an input, then that input has to be basically passed along arguments. And if it agrees with arguments, then it prints whatever that is under that argument. So first off, we start with a draw. And to eliminate it be more complicated, I'm just going to say if what I enter, and what the computer enters is the same, just print draw. And now we start with outcomes with rock. Which is basically, if you get rock, besides draw, what you can, what you can get is rock with scissors and rock with paper. And I'm saying else if what I input is equal to rock and what the computer inputs is equal to, is equal to paper, then print you lost. Because if I have rock, and the computer has paper, so he has a hand and he puts his hand out and he has paper and I have rock, then I lost. And now we have outcomes with paper, which is exact same thing, only this time if I enter paper and the computer enters, chooses, say scissors, then I lose. Basically why we put them in a function is so that every, say I start with round one after I finish this block of code, and then I have to repeat those rules for round one, then rewrite them again for round two, changing the inputs, and then rewrite them again for round three. That's why I put it in a function called rounds. So then later I, I can just say rounds and then put in the two values. So it saves me more time. Basically, it saves me a round. Can't count around my lines. And now what we have is outlier, which means this if the if say I entered anything else beside an R, P, or S, then the whole program will crash. We don't want that. So now we have a argument saying if none of them match that, else just say I entered the at symbol or I entered a P not a PM, an L or a Z or a full stop, then it will it, I, the program has to tell me that I entered something wrong. So now I'm gonna say wrong input and then I'll, I'll add a, which means it will print wrong input and what the wrong imp input was, which is kind of helpful in most ways. Now that we have most of the code done, all we need to do is actually call the functions and assign them to the rounds. So round one. Also, anything, any line that starts with a hashtag is a comment, which means when I run the code, none of those will be executed because it's a comment and it's literally just there for me to understand the code and stuff. Now we have to create a variable called user, which means it will ask me to enter something. At the very start, I had one that asked the computer to choose a random choice from the list. Now I have to do an input, which means I have to enter the R, P, and S I've been talking about that this whole time. Now we call the indicate function, which prints out our you chose and the computer chose, or bot chose in this case. And add the variables user and bot. 
And now we call the rounds function and put in the rules there. See, that's what I was talking about. When you have them in functions, you don't need to rewrite the whole code. You can just write, just write that one line and you're basically done. And now round one is exact same as format wise. The, the exact same as round two and three. The only difference is we have different variables. So round one is user, round two is user one, and round three is user two. I don't know if anyone understood what I was talking about throughout this whole video. And if you did, well done because I'm so bad at explaining stuff. I probably repeated myself 500 times. But anyway, thanks for watching and see you guys ne next time.